up YouTubers, welcome back. Thanks again for checking out another one of my videos. Today we got a traditional moto vlog on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. I'm trying to enjoy the sunshine, the dry roads, put some miles on the scooter. I want to talk about the pros and cons to having a big board kit. And to be honest with you guys, I feel there are more cons than there are pros. But you're going to have to wait till the end for my final conclusion. So I got a Yamaha Zuma 125. And I've just recently installed a 175cc big board kit on my scooter. From RC Scooters. Check them out. And I feel there are more cons than pros on having a big board kit. And this is from personal experience. I'm not an expert. I just want to share my thoughts with you guys. So let's run down the list to see if I can get this blog done. Okay. So pro number one. The biggest benefit of having a big board kit is more power. Right. What can I do with more power? Well, obviously, I got more top speed. Right? And that's probably why everybody gets a big board kit, to go a little bit faster. But what can I do with more speed, right? More speed gives me more access to different places. scooter, that thing would only go 45 miles an hour. I wouldn't even think about going on roads with the top speed or speed limit of 55 miles per hour. Because people are probably doing 65 miles per hour. Because you're certainly not getting on the freeway where people are doing 70, 75 miles an hour. Because you can only do 45. Right? So more speed gives you more access to different places. I didn't make it to the beach on my 50cc, I didn't make it to Lake Tonoma on my 50cc, and I didn't make it to Lake Berryessa on my 50cc, I did it on the 125, because it had more speed, and more speed gave me more access to different roads, and those roads opened up a lot more adventures for me. Alright, also, more speed allows you to go with the flow of traffic. Like I said, some of these roads are 55 miles an hour. People are doing 65 miles an hour. And if you're stuck at 50, you've got people tailgating you, which is dangerous. You're at your max, which is dangerous. So more speed allows me to go with the flow of traffic. And I have more acceleration from the power. That allows me to get up with the flow of traffic, get up to speed sooner. My 50cc could do 45 miles an hour, but honestly, it took me like three minutes to get to top speed of no red lights, flat ground, and maybe even a wind behind me. With more power, I can get up to speed sooner, so I'm not holding up traffic. I don't have people tailgating me. Hills better with the extra power, which is nice. Because some steep hills will 
that's it for pros. If I left something out, put it in the comments below. But let's run down the list of cons. Oh. Side effects or, I don't know, kind of the downside of having a big organ. Number one is money. You gotta spend money on a big board kit. Alright? You just spent money on a scooter or Grom or Ruckus. Or the Honda Monkey Bike. Now you're gonna spend more money to get a big board kit? Alright? So money is the biggest con to buying a big board kit. The second con I found was installation. does custom work on scooters. Everybody will service it. They'll change my oil, lead my brakes, install new tires. But nobody wants to put on aftermarket parts and do custom work on a scooter. Not in my area. They do it down south, around LA, San Diego. Huge scooter scene small bore scene but now I gotta ship my scooter down there I gotta pay for shipping I gotta pay to have somebody install it I gotta pay to ship it back right ultimately I ended up installing it myself and I had no experience in how to do it so that was a learning process on top of that I had to buy tools I never knew I needed before Okay, what's another con? The bigger the big board kit, the more supporting mods you're going to need. You can bolt on a 155 with very minimal parts and get a little bit extra speed and a little bit extra power. Or you can upgrade to a 164 or a 175. another con. Well, if you get a really big, big more kit, your engine is going to produce more heat. Okay? And you're going to lose a little power in a transfer of heat. Right? That's just a given. Alright? And because you're producing more heat, you might actually need an oil cooler at this point. So that your engine isn't working as hard. And you're not putting extra strain on your engine. So that's a downside of having a big board kit. Another downside of having a bigger engine is it use more gas. I'm getting less miles per gallon right now than I was on the stock engine. On the 125, I was averaging 65 to 60 miles per gallon. On this 175, I'm averaging 55 to 50 miles per gallon. So I lost 10 miles per gallon. On a one gallon tank, that's kind of a big deal. I was already cautious of where my gas stations were and planning out my route because I didn't want to end up somewhere stuck with no gas. Now I have to pay even more attention and be a little bit more precise in figuring out what gas station I have to hit or skip. So that's the downside of having a big board kit. But if I would do it all over again, if I had to do it all over again, uh, would I do it again? 
or better yet, do I regret buying the Big Board Kit? No, I do not regret buying the Big Board Kit. I do regret on blowing up my first one. If you follow me on Instagram, the link's in the description, you know that this is not my first big board kit. I had a 164 big board kit and I blew it up. The piston seized. Shattered the piston. Bent the Conrad on the crank. Scratched the cylinder wall. Damaged the bows. I regret I losing money on broken parts because that's money I could have used on more mods that's what I regret is losing money on broken parts I enjoy having the extra power the extra speed the extra torque I'm getting used to this new power this new speed which is something I never had before so that's also a learning experience but the reason I don't regret buying the big board kid is because this scooter is a personal investment. It's not a financial investment. It's a personal investment in personal experiences, personal adventures, personal memories. If you're going to buy a 50cc scooter to put a big board kit on it, just to upgrade to a 125cc to put a big board kit on it, just to upgrade to like a Ninja 300 or a Yamaha R3, no, don't buy the big board kit. Just buy the R3. But I plan on keeping the scooter for a long time. It's been six years already. I might keep it for another six. I still have mods on here that I haven't installed. It's not finished. It's a personal investment, not a financial investment. There are people with the experience and the know-how to buy small bore bikes, build them up and sell them for a profit, but that's not my intention. My intention is to go on adventures and build new memories on my little scooter, which I love. So that's why I don't regret it. You need to take a look at what you want to do on your bike. Are you just going to upgrade to a bigger bike? No, don't get a big board kit. Just get the bigger bike. Are you going to keep it because you're building a custom ride that you want to enjoy for years to come? Hey, maybe a big board kit might be worth it. But it has to be worth it to you. Not just because it's worth it to me. So those are my thoughts, my personal experiences, my two cents on why I think there are more cons or downsides than benefits to a big board kit, but why I bought a big board kit anyways, twice. Hit that like, subscribe, comment below, click the bell for notifications. If I missed something, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Feel free to share. Hope you liked the video. We're in some crazy times. Let's see if I can produce some content anyways. And until then, ride safe, stay safe. Oh, this lady fucking rubbing her nipples for me. Ooh, see what a big board kit does, man? Puts the ladies in the mood. Rubbing them nipples. <laughs> Peace out. Missions on I'm <laughs> gonna